Good evening. My name is Kanita Lloyd, and I am the Chief Operating Officer of the Eagle Academy Foundation. I'm so excited to bring you a very special episode of the Virtual Village, Moms Making It Happen. Tonight, we have three fierce women joining us, so please share your video, start a watch party, and enter your questions in the comments because you are in for a truly dynamic discussion. First and foremost, I wanna give another happy Mother's Day shout out to all the mothers, grandmothers, mamas, nanas, TTs, abuelas, big mama, little mama, and everybody else. I'm here to tell you, it's no joke. So if you're already celebrating the whole week, take the month. All right, mm -hmm. my guests tonight are Misha Ross Porter, Executive Superintendent of Br the Bronx Public Schools, Denise Brown, parent coordinator at the Eagle Academy for Young Men in the Bronx, and hailing from Baltimore, Maryland, artist, activist, advocate, and comedian, Michelle. Ladies, let's get right into it. Yes. Michelle, most people don't know that before you transition to comedy, you were also an educator. I understand right. that you have not one, not two, but three teens at home, Michelle. Yes. Tell us what is really going on in these streets. Mm. Well, let's let's be real clear. I am, um, by the grace of God, I have not made it to central booking. Um, I thought that I might catch a charge um, fooling with these three people that I made. But to be fair, I have one college student, one rising junior, and one uh, seventh grader. And having one in each area of education has just been a social experiment on crack in the best way. Um, having one who went away to college 2000 miles away from home, right? Uh, did a semester and a half because of COVID and came back understanding the entire universe and has answers for every question. This, this woman child believes that she has just really discovered all of the adulting that anybody should ever need. And um, if I have any questions, I should be asking her uh, how to manage grown woman stuff. And I have to remind her, look at my shirt, that I am a god, okay? <laughs> a god, a grown <laughs> woman, darling, okay? So I have to manage that. Um, and then I have my sophomore and she's sweet, you know, she's working hard. And then I have my son. So I've got all this estrogen and a little bit of testosterone and, um, and it's been a good mixture because all of them are able to really self-govern when it comes to the virtual schooling. You know, the virtual schooling piece has been a challenge for a lot of people. I'm very fortunate. I don't have to teach one class. I don't have to do any home schooling because these people can conjugate a verb in a couple of languages on their own and they are taskmasters. So for that, I am extremely grateful. I don't know what it's like for y'all that's going through with having to actually teach lessons to these people that you made. That ain't my testimony. I'm making sure by checking the virtual schedules that they're on point. But in terms of actually teaching them, I'm grateful. Like you said, Kanita, I was training to be a school psychologist. I was in the third year of my PhD at Temple University working to become a licensed school psychologist. And so I have some you know, understanding about how these things work. And for, for over two decades, um, I was married to an educator as well um, before I got on parole. I'm about to be on parole. But before I made parole, I was married to an educator for almost two decades, over two decades. And so he too is very astute in the areas of learning and stuff. But I will be the first to tell you that I'm grateful that these kids can self-manage. I, 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 don't, I, I don't know what you're going through, Misha. I don't know what you're going through, Denise. My testimony, I heard Kanita's testimony that her son is still, you know, in primary school, uh, maybe I'm in secondary and I'm about to be out the box and I'm excited. I can't wait for anybody to go 2000 miles away. So with that being said, it has been an amazing experience um, watching them master just the fluidity of virtual learning. You know, that's not everybody's story, but my kids, I don't know if it's because they already were genetically predisposed to um, smartphones and iPads and you know laptops and MacBooks, but fluidly they have embraced this whole virtual learning experience, and it's been good for me. Great. That is so so good to hear from you. So good to hear from you, and thank you for telling us about your your teens. Um, 
Uh, you mentioned, I do, my son, he's 10 years old, Nash, everybody knows him. He is usually in the camera right here with me. Um, I too have been working full time from home um, and decomposing uh, fractions and multiplying and finding the common denominator. And it has been, it's been a real challenge. It has been a real challenge, but um, I got to talk to this fourth grade teacher. We spent 45 minutes on the phone in between um, two Zoom calls, and then I got right back to it. So I know we are all, all the mothers out there that are working full time, um, taking an hour here and a half an hour there for the school calls, the calls with their, with the teachers, um, the student Zoom calls. It, it is, um, it has been a, a, a challenging time for all of us. It's like having two full-time jobs on the same schedule yeah. is what it has felt like over these past couple of weeks. Um, and, and the reality of it is that we're doing it, um, you know, at home, we're doing it under, without all of our maintenance and all of our, our self-care. Um, you know, we, we had to, we had to glam up to get in here tonight. Um, Miss Brown, I know you and I had talked about getting our hair together for the episode, coming yeah, and, and being ready for, the, for this evening. Miss Brown, how, how are you holding up? Um, in this self in this quarantine well i have all my products behind me first of all um i am ready i i i was ready the last day the stores were open i was at my wigologist store and i got all the hair that i needed um i've been quarantined with my cat morris but um it, it is different working from home seriously it is very different not having the interaction with your you know, um, co-workers and not seeing them every day. So it's definitely been different and quite an adjustment for me. I, I understand. Misha, so tell us about, you know, as parents, we interact with our children's principals, our teachers and guidance counselors, but you are in a leadership role that many parents do not interface with. Tell us about the yeah. role of executive superintendent. Then I want to get into um, what home life is like for you uh, with mm -hmm. two young women and a, and a husband that's a first responder. Child, it's the two young women that's the problem. No. <laughs> um, so I'll just tell you, you know, I serve 162,000 plus students and families. And like Michelle said, in my own house, I have mm. my daughter graduated officially from college on Saturday um, as a dance major. Yes. yes, I'm so proud of her. And I have a ninth grader who's a superstar and needs very little support from me. In fact, I'm in, um, I'm, I'm doing my doctorate right now at Fordham. So I probably need a little support from them. I tell them, don't check my pupil path. I don't, I don't wanna have no problems with the children. Um, but, but, it, but what is my responsibility is ensuring that, you know, the 100 and, 162,000 students that I'm responsible for are getting the support they need because everyone's story and experience in remote learning isn't the same. And so the role of the executive superintendent pre-COVID and post-COVID is that I supervise the eight superintendents that preside over the um, 304 schools in the Bronx. And mm -hmm. I also supervise and manage the borough office. And so we are the support organization, the professional development, um, the operations, the human resources that support um, staff, uh, finance every school. And so what Chancellor Carranza uh, did when he came to New York City was he created, he wanted to decentralize the system in a sense and create borough central offices. So there was borough level accountability for the work that happened in schools. And so mm -hmm. my role is to oversee that, but also bring coherence around that. And then as a Bronx educator, as a Bronx resident, I also feel deeply, um, and as a Bronx mama, um, yes. you know, I really feel deeply that it is my responsibility to transform mm -hmm. the narrative and the belief that folks have about the Bronx, you know, to really show um, and shine a light on the great work that so many of our schools, our students, um, and our communities are doing. And so part of my work is also about that, really being a, a, a transformer of that narrative of what people think about when they think about the Bronx or, um, you know, they, they don't really know what's here. And so I wanna also make it my work 
to bring out the beauty of all that we have going on here in the boogie down Bronx, the birthplace of hip hop. Um, you just had to say that. You know, <laughs> I had to say it because my, my homies right. w- wouldn't let me come back on if I didn't. And so that's, that's my work. My work is really bringing coherence to the system locally, ensuring that schools are getting the levels of support that they need, um, managing and supervising the superintendents, um, but also, uh, you know, really being that, that, that narrative changer. So folks know that th- this is a beautiful borough that I get to serve in and that I get to lead in. And I'm really proud to be here. Absolutely. That, that, that is so great. Thank you for that, Misha. Miss Brown, um, yes. you know, speaking of just as we talk about Misha's role um, and how she's looking to change the narrative on the Bronx, how do you think, how can parents partner with teachers in their school community as mm-hmm. we navigate this uncertainty and plan for a safe summer and transition into the next school year? Well, this is definitely different for all of us. It's unprecedented times that we're living in. So it's important for me, for parents to um, check in regularly with the teachers, ask questions regarding their son's academic success via the telephone, email um, at Eagle Bronx. First of all, I'd like to shout out all of the Eagle Academy Network parents. Um, Thank you for your dedication all of you, and a special shout out to Eagle Bronx parents. Love you very much. Um, So parents can definitely, through great team meetings, we have that at Eagle Bronx with teachers. Also, um, I know our administrative team has created like a remote learning email. So we have like a Scholar Life team also that checks in with parents. So if you get that call, parents, every school has a different um, way of operating. So if you have someone checking in and you need help, please let them know immediately. Also attend all of the virtual school meetings. That way you're staying up, up to date and you're knowledgeable about your son's progress and reach out to the guidance counselors. They're at the school for emotional support. Parent coordinators like myself, we're here to help out in every way. Monitor your school's online database activity, if it's pupil path or whatever they may call it at your school. And at Eagle Bronx, and I, I, for every school, I'm sure, many parents send information. And I find when parents share information mm-hmm. with each other and send it to me for me to send out, it is definitely partnering with the school. I'm very passionate about that. And when my parents email me and say, "Miss Brown, check this out, send this out, it is amazing. So that's one way to keep in partnership with the school. And doing that, we're planning for the future. Thank you so much. I wanna remind our audience that we are taking questions. If you have a question for Ms. Brown, Misha, even Michelle, um, put it in the, enter your your questions in the comments um, and we'll be taking questions as we we round out this episode. Michelle, kids are hilarious and unfiltered. Um, What is the funniest story you've heard or that's happened in your household during this homeschooling, during the pandemic? What's funny, but not so funny? You don't want this. You don't want this smoke. You do not want this smoke. (laughs) Yes, we do. You don't want this. Denise, I promise you, Misha, y'all don't want this smoke. Y'all, listen, the reality is this. I mean, and and because we all love educators, we're we're you know connected to educators. Uh, we find ourselves to be we think we're educated. You don't know nothing mm-hmm. until you go into a global pandemic with some people who have no understanding of the implications of what a global pandemic means. I keep reminding these people that I made that ripped my ovaries in half. I keep reminding these people <laughs> that. This has never happened before. We don't have a precedent for this. I wasn't around during the bubonic plague and smallpox and the the Great Depression. I don't have a hitherto. So I'm painting my numbers up in this piece and y'all going too hard at the wrong time. I don't know if I can't, I don't know if anybody else understands what I'm saying, but they're trying to do some things that they normally do But you can't do that because it's a global pandemic. And so my big challenge is 
it just, re, you know, relating the brevity of what this is. I'm like, if you, I wish I could cuss. I, I wish I could cuss. If you take your country outside, right? <laughs> and you walk in the wrong direction and then walk your goof up in my house and bring it on the bottom of your shoe, we all jammed up. Mm -hmm. So I'm trying to get these people to understand. I feel like I'm talking about, I feel like I'm talking about people I don't even know. <laughs> trying to get these people to understand how serious it is, right? And then on mm -hmm. top of that, you know, I, like I said, I've got, you know, this college student who's been pretty much doing her own thing, you know, away from home. So this is the first time she ever never had to check in with nobody. You know what I mean? You oh. down in Texas getting your whole life. It ain't no snow down there. It ain't, you know, it's like you living your best life. You got to come back to the East Coast where we have seasons. I'm going to need you to put some clothes on. I'm going to need you to put some clothes on, baby sis. You ain't in Houston no more. That belly button ain't necessary. I'm going to need you to wrap up for not only you catching the Rona, but you mess around and catch pneumonia. I have just like little basic stuff that I can't get no help in this place. It's like the basic stuff that seems so normal is not, there is no normal anymore, yeah. right? So I want to take them out for walks, you know, and do stuff like that. But I got to remind them that there are some people who have this gross sense of entitlement that refuse to put a mask on. Mm -hmm. Not my humans, but humans outside of us that usually lack melanin, I don't want no trouble, usually lack melanin, are real excited about just being outside. I don't want no trouble, I really don't. What I'm saying to you is I have to remind them everybody's not playing fair. So even when we go out, I'm gonna need you to stay 500 paces behind Connor and Sawyer. Cause Connor don't care, Sawyer don't care, and Emily gives zero, right? <laughs> so what I'm saying to you is we're not about to catch one on the strength of Amanda. Do you understand what I'm saying to you? So I have to reel them in and just give them the severity of how it's not normal anymore just to be out and about. And one of the things that one of my children said to me, I just miss my friends. And I said, I get that. Like, if ever these little people, I'm not going to cuss because I, I love God. Um, what I'm saying to you is, if ever these people ever had an appreciation for school, yes. like, these yes. people yes. want to go to school. And I make it real clear, I want you to go to school. <laughs> I want you to leave yesterday. You're not the only one that wants you to go to school, but here's what it is. There is a pandemic happening. Everybody going to school. So my son's thing was, when will I see my friends? I said, as long as everybody say they little goofy behind in the house, then you'll see them sooner. But the more y'all trying to come out and run and do this, that, and the third, y'all are pushing yourselves back from actually interfacing. So it was like right. those kinds of things that I, ne I never had to have this discussion before. Right. I never, you know, we thought we was doing something when we told our children to do like this when they sneeze. We ain't doing nothing. Mm -hmm. Now I'm gonna need you to put some gloves on, a mask on, some booties on your feet. I'm gonna need you to keep some hand sanitizer in your backpack. It's like, I'm giving them directives as if we are in Afghanistan. You understand? I'm going to prepare Absolutely. them for germ warfare. <laughs> so the, the biggest thing for me is that we're fighting a war on germs, on a yeah. virus that gives zero about yeah. where you live, who your parents are, mm -hmm. and what you are accustomed to. I'm going to need you to yes. sit down and just hold still for a minute so we can get through this. So the funniest things that have been happening to me is that just trying to get them to understand yeah. that this mm -hmm. is real. This ain't, this ain't no Netflix mm -hmm. movie. Mm -hmm. this, ain't, you know, this ain't no YouTube video. We really in a global pandemic. Y'all yes. think this is, y'all act like y'all mad. Who you mad at? Who, who, you, who you mad at? I, please tell me who did it. We can all go get him. You can't pinpoint it. So I'm gonna need you to simmer down. So the mm -hmm. funniest things to me have been just watching them just sort of organically fall in love with the idea of going to school, mm -hmm. being in school, missing the teacher that they couldn't 
they, mm -hmm. they, 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 I'm so sick of so-and-so. You can't wait to get back in so-and-so's class because mm -hmm. you miss the interaction. So for me, I'm like poking the bear, like, I bet you wish you was in so-and-so class today, don't you? You wish she was sending mm -hmm. you down the hallway to pick something up, don't you? Mm -hmm. I bet you you wish you was outside at recess, don't you, with your little bootleg friends, don't you? Like, I'm rubbing it in. Like, so I'm I'm hopeful mm -hmm. that it's, it resensitizes them to how yeah. wonderful it is to be in school, honestly. Yes, absolutely. And I, I think my my son ha has expressed recently mm -hmm. that he, he actually misses school, misses the cafeteria. He said, I miss even being at my desk. This is all so right. different. Yeah. And you're so right about a, a war on germs. Early on, my son mm -hmm. um, pressed the our floor in the elevator and then put his finger in his nose. And I said, oh my God, my baby's going to die tonight. <laughs> like this is well, it. First of all, wait right a minute, wait a minute. That, there's a lot of things wrong there. Uh, so many, but you know what? We talk about that boy energy, right? We talk about right. that at right. Evo all the time. I mean, he is a 10 year old right. boy. I can't imagine what the places he puts his finger that I don't know anything about. Okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> But Denise, but Brown, Denise and Misha, did, did y'all catch that Kanita had to slide in there that she got an elevator? Ain't nobody asked her if she had an <laughs> elevator. She had to let every, there are people who have walk-ups. You understand? I also live in New York. There are people with three-story walk-ups, but she had to let everybody know he pushed the elevator. See, I'm, was, so I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm sure some of y'all living in, in homes and you got a, what black people call it, upstairs, downstairs, not just, yes. <laughs> not just stays in your home, Michelle. Um, yes. And we, we got some, we have some questions from, from our audience tonight. Um, Desiree is asking us, um, and I think you, uh, Misha and Denise, what are you doing? What are we all doing to relax from distance learning? Oh, may I? Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Okay, so what do I do to relax from distance learning, from being even working for parents who are working at home? Music. I don't know about you, but I'm at club quarantine every night. Um, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm there. I'm there. Whatever you can do to relax, if it's music, reading a book, I'm catching up on some novels that I enjoy. I have not been able to read but do something to make sure that you take time out for yourself to relax and maybe put the mm -hmm. laptop down for a moment. So for me, it's music. I've been at the Jill Scott, Erica Badu concert. I've been at the Teddy Riley, um, um, Babyface. I've, I've attended more concerts in my life than I've ever attended before. So I'm, I'm having a good time with the relaxing when I can do those type of things and have take that moment out just for yourself. Yeah, I mean, I was yeah. definitely, you gotta figure out how to disconnect. Um, yes. When this all first started, it was just like, like glued to, to got, got the phone, the laptop, like you just glued to everything. And so one of the things that I've done is just like really organize my schedule and not feel like that guilt because you're working from home, right? That mm -hmm. like, well, I'm home, so I should be able to do everything or be available. And so you have to take that, make take that those same breaks for yourself that, that you do when we go to work and we actually come home and say, okay, I'm home. You got to make some home time. Um, the other thing I would say, like I have a big family. I come from a big family. And so connecting is a big part of what we mm -hmm. do. And so I, I, my joke is like, if this was 1987, this would have been jacked up. We wouldn't have been able to have no Zoom. We wouldn't have been able, like we had one phone in the house and it went, It had a busy signal. Like it, it would have been crazy if it was 1987. And so how can we, you really use the, the technology that we have to continue to connect with the people you love mm -hmm. um, and, and really stay connected. So staying connected, making time. And, you know, I like my green thumb is getting a little back in, in order, you know, got some green mm -hmm. life coming up around the house. And so that has mm -hmm. been really good. And I'm cooking more. I mean, I love to cook, yeah. um, mm -hmm. but I'm definitely cooking more meals. And, you know, my husband's out there. He's an essential worker. He coming home wanting dinner. Like, <laughs> bruh, <laughs> I've been working all day on this couch at this laptop. <laughs> but he's still walking up in here like he should have dinner. Mm -hmm. You've been on the couch, Misha. You've been working hard on that couch hard. all day. 
Okay. 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 So. What'd you say, Denise? I said, did she make him a turkey and Swiss sandwich? I'm just trying to. <laughs> Girl, I cooks. For oh. real. Tell it with an ass. Misha Let me tell you ass. something. I'll tell you one thing good. So, I mean, I, I cook a lot of good things, but I made a turkey. I never made a turkey before. Uh oh. I tell you, like, I, I bought that turkey a life it never had. That tech turkey had more life out my <laughs> oven than it had when it was clucking around. <laughs> and now my mother said I gotta make the turkey for Thanksgiving. Oh that's what you get, Misha, for cooking with the ass. <laughs> that's what's happening. No and we'll skill. be there for Thanksgiving. All right. One thing, I'll say, one thing I'll say about technology that I'm loving about this, and as much as we can stay connected, technology mm -hmm. has also been a blessing on who not to pick up. I can't get no help yeah. in here. Anybody else wanna uh ain't nobody else gonna witness the fact that some Amen. numbers you see come through, you let it go straight to voicemail. I'm sorry. It's just, I am so mm -hmm. grateful for, for technology because I can see you coming and I can say, <laughs> oh, this one right here, you ain't getting none of this because you, you, you back crazy. You understand? So I'm not, I'm not picking up. I, all of us are going through something, but you know, you got them yeah. special members of your family or your yes. friends call you. And as soon as you pick the phone up, the energy is like, oh, so. Also, technology has been a blessing in that it helps me avoid, you know, some of those experiences I'm just not interested in engaging. And it's not mm -hmm. me being mean or disingenuous. I'd rather give you my best self. If yeah. I know I can't mm -hmm. give you my best self, I'm not picking up the phone because I don't need that exchange. It's already a challenge that we're in something where people, my writing partner who's from Brooklyn in two weeks lost 36 people. Mm. Mm. I don't have the bandwidth, do you understand? Ooh. That just keep mm -hmm. exchanging those stories. Like I'm gonna pray for those people. I'm gonna pray for their mm -hmm. families, but I need some good energy to counter all of that, you know, that those fatalities. I need to be able to pray for those people, but I also need to be able to still take care of myself and my children. I'm a stand-up comic. Every stage that I'm supposed to be on is dark in New York. I can't mm -hmm. go to a club and work nowhere. I can't perform in any theaters. Mm -hmm. I can't pitch stuff to my network execs. I am completely dark. So mm -hmm. my whole thing is I'm dying to get back to my work. So I had to learn how to be creative and mm -hmm. recreate my work in a virtual space. Mm -hmm. So I'm sitting here navigating that and having to still care for three children Mm -hmm. I don't really have the bandwidth for too much, you know, wow. negativity. So I've used technology to help me buffer. And mm -hmm. I've also, like you, Misha, I've listened, and, and you too, Denise, I've I mm -hmm. listened to a lot of concerts, but listen, the funniest one to me when you said Teddy and Babyface, I, I, I didn't look at the first one because I couldn't get past your boy with the shoulders, the, the dude with the shoulders and the beard that was dancing in Teddy Riley video, oh. I couldn't. So I, I was there. As soon as I, saw, as soon as I saw Papa Smurf whopping, I had to let it go. I I, I couldn't watch oh. it. So, oh. but the second one was brilliant. It was brilliant. But to oh. your point, we have had some of the best. The creatives of which I owe yeah. I owe myself yeah. as a creative. Creatives mm -hmm. have stretched themselves in ways that we probably would have never stretched ourselves That's had it not been for a pandemic. You wouldn't have seen Erica and Jill doing no virtual. It was as if we went into their living room and just sat right. with them, you know? Yeah. So those kinds of experiences are organic to this particular moment. And I'm grateful for that. Yes. That, thank you so much. That, that was, um, that yeah. we sharing what we are all doing and how we're coping with distance yeah. learning. We've got some more questions from our audience. Um, what's the, what, what recommendations do we have for our parents, our, our, our guardians, our families out there who are dealing with their children, who miss school, um, who miss their friends? How, how can that, what advice do you have for helping them connect virtually with their friends? Um, my son is always connected to a device, so I'm not even sure he physically misses the people that he may see every day. But for those, for those um, mothers that are more mindful of screen time, how can they how can they connect their young boys and all of their children socially during this time? 
well, we miss them too. So they should know that. Like our, mm -hmm. we miss schools full of mm -hmm. laughing, smiling, ha even pouty children. Yes. Um, we miss the kids. Um, so much. And I, I had the pleasure of getting on a, 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 a district nine um, student advisory council meeting essay, and it just made my heart warm. And so one, I think the one thing is the students should know, like we miss them, their teachers, their principals mm -hmm. miss them just as much as they miss being in school and with each other. Um, and I, I would say relax a bit on the platforms. And, and I mean, relax the restrictions. Mm -hmm. This is the way our kids socialize in this moment. And you can pull back, you know, you can put those parameters back in place tighter after this is over. But part of the, part of what's important about school is about socialization and building relationships and, and collaborating and communicating. And so parents should create virtual Zoom you know, meetups with other parents, with other students. Um, and I, I keep saying over and over again, parents are so critical for us as partners to our schools, to our districts. You know who has, you know who doesn't, you know who's hungry, you know who's struggling with their work academically. Um, the Most of the, the calls that I've gotten from parents have really been about supporting other parents and families, which is, I think, a beautiful thing. And it's that old school sense of community we need to get back to. So I would say, figure out a way to create those virtual spaces for your young people, um, you know, so that they still feel connected. They have their ways already that they're virtually connected, whether it's through like, you know, they've been playing that game thingy. Um, see, the kids always come and instruct you. <laughs> Hey, hey, you know what I'm saying? Like, yes. I'm important. I'm a big deal. <laughs> but I hear the ice cream and truck. The ice cream man. You hear him. Truck. Anyway. <laughs> Cow, Mr. Softy outside. Y'all want something? Who want a toasted almond, strawberry <laughs> shortcake? <laughs> <laughs> but, but no, talk. really. I mean, like, but even that, right? Like, that is, that's the sound of connection. Right? right, young people are missing that connection, and so it's our responsibility to help them get the, get it. And this is also a moment, you know, where parents can get more involved in those connections because in these days and times where we're so separated, because we have all of these devices, now is a parent's opportunity to really get engaged. Jump into the conversations mm -hmm. with your your children, check in on their friends, but create a space for them to get together because they do miss each. Other. That's what I hear from young people, from the young people in my family, mm -hmm. not just mine who live here, but the ones, you know, my nephews and nieces, they, they miss the connection of school. So I think families really should figure out how to create that. Absolutely. Thank you so much. We well, have another, my, another one question. One of my friends. Okay, go ahead. Mm -hmm. um, no, go ahead, Michelle. No, one of my girlfriends, her daughter, um, about how families are dealing with IEPs. With IEPs, you said? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Misha, you want to take so that I'll, one? So I'll say that. Um, Yep, yep, yep. So uh, first of all, every school created an individualized learning plan for students with IEPs to accompany them in this remote learning. And, you know, we're not in the building, but we're still at work. And so if parents are struggling, you know, enacting those IEPs, right, like Michelle joked about it, I've heard from so many parents that are struggling, right? Like I, I tell everybody, if I had to help that child with geometry, it'd be a hot mess. You know, and so we're still here. And so one, if you need support around how you enact that IEP, you should reach it directly out to your school. Those special education teachers are there. The IEP support folks are there. Um, you know, at the borough office, we got a ton of support folks that are there. We wanna make sure our most vulnerable students 
don't get caught up and swept up and, and struggle greater. We want to provide every support possible. And so if you're not sure about the implementation of your child's IEP, or even if you're struggling with that individual learning plan that was created for your child, reach out to us. That's what we're here for. Um, we're here to support. We're here to help. We're here to make sure we are partnering with parents in this learning process. And I think one thing that I, I look forward to coming out on the other side of this is a deeper, deeper partnership mm -hmm. with parents in schools. Thank you. I, I appreciate that. Ms. Brown, did you want to add as a parent coordinator? I know your, your primary role is in is maintaining communication mm -hmm. with the school, with parents, with families. Um, how would you, any resources that you want to share for families um, in need of support from their school community? Oh, oh, absolutely. Um, some of the resources that I have, especially for children who learn and think differently, understood.org. It's a wonderful website and it really hones in with children who learn or think differently. Great website. Parents should definitely check that out. Um, and resources, especially doing COVID. I have some other resources, too, I'd, I'd like to share. Um, one about the media. Common Sense Media is very excellent about how to protect your children online, giving them that extra space to um, go online. That's an excellent resource. The New York Public Library, they have free tutoring resources. Check them out. Excellent. Also, um, if you um, need any help or any emergency, food, et cetera, um, nyc.gov is an excellent resource for parents who may be struggling and they need support in different areas. Those are great. I love resources, so I could go on and on, but those are just a few to give out to the parents. And I think I do have some that might be shared on the chat. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for that. Another question from Faith Jones. What are we doing for our seniors um, besides uh, this Saturday's Graduate Together movement? Misha, I know you have so a daughter who recently graduated college. Yes. So we did, we had, we took over this block. We, you know, my, my daughter actually enjoyed her uh, drive through graduation more than she was planning on enjoying her real graduation, although I was looking forward to it. Um, but there will be a citywide graduation um, for students. More details are coming f around that. But individual schools and in each of the boroughs are really thinking about how we celebrate our seniors and all of them, because I have to tell you, we keep talking about this, but then the fifth graders call me and they're like, what's up, miss? And the eighth graders call me and they're like, what's up, miss? 12th graders ain't the only one graduating. Um, and so we really need to acknowledge all of our young people that are mm -hmm. moving up and transitioning to another space um, because they are calling. Every time they hear us talk about it, I, somebody, one of them calls me out and lets me know, um, yeah, my little fifth grade prom was canceled too. So don't act like it didn't matter. Um, so we, we, we need to think about how we celebrate mm -hmm. our young people. And I would also add parents, this is a great, another space where you can virtually, like, what was that group? You know, there was going to be a group that was going to meet up at somebody's house. There was going to be a group that was going to travel together in a car. That was going to happen. And so how do you bring that group together virtually in a safe way um, so that they still feel the levels of celebration? My daughter, we probably had like 30, 40 cars coming through here. My village is mad deep. And they came and showed mad love. And so it was greatly appreciated because it wasn't, me and her dad that got her there it was a whole village and community of folks that got her there. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I was going to share that um, one of my dear friends, her daughter is graduating high school and, um, and had gotten her college acceptance. You know, May, I believe, 1st was uh, college acceptance day where you share, you know, where you're going to be going. And so she combined her acceptance with her celebrating her senior year. So she um, had a virtual, like, like Misha was saying, she had a virtual um, celebration um, that she's preparing for her for high school graduation. But when she got it, when she announced to school that she was being accepted, that she chose her um, national day of choice, national day of decision is what it is. 
and mm-hmm. she had an entire like um, social media layout of her with all her new paraphernalia on from the school that she's been accepted to. And people were able to congratulate her that way. I think the same thing that Misha said and Denise said, these kids are very accustomed to putting themselves out there on their social media platforms. We can encourage them to do it in a way to celebrate their accomplishments of completing fifth grade, completing eighth grade, um, completing um, high school. And I, I'll say this, I, I've had kids who, what they call graduated in each area thus far, middle school, elementary school, high school. And there's something about in high school um, that can't be dismissed. It is such yeah. a huge life change for them. They're going from the secondary experience to higher education. I can honestly believe, say to you, having gone through that with my daughter, there's no other experience to compare to that. Leaving um, your high school years and going on to college yeah. is a rite of passage. And so I don't want to always mix the three together. I think they are, you know, um, by themselves, very unique experiences and we should celebrate them all. But let's be real, real clear. High school yeah. graduation is huge. And there are some whose family members have never completed high school. That's right. And so when they see their loved one's child or niece or nephew, that's why you get all of those special urban congratulatory ceremonies at graduation. Mm-hmm. That's why TT and them come with a lot of clothes on. And that's yeah. why they got banners and, and, and fans with pictures on them because they know this may not have happened this could have been a mm-hmm. uh, this could have been a thing where yeah. this never happened because they've got firsthand experiences of aunties that didn't get to this rites of passage. They've got uncles who never made it out of high school. So you will see mom and them, TT, Shantries, Quante, um, Manuela, Jesus, all of them will show up mm-hmm. at high school graduation and show their whole self. You know, yeah. their whole self. You go, they mm-hmm. their whole self in this. And, and we have to still make that moment precious for them during these times. So I'm suggesting use their social media platforms mm-hmm. and, you know, be, be our original and get family members to do little v- videos, like quick little one minute videos, right? Of them saying, we're so proud of you. We love you. And, and, and string those videos together and make it sort of like a mock documentary of everybody celebrating that young person and their family finishing these milestones. You can do those kinds of things. Create those pick collages of yeah. kindergarten mm-hmm. and middle school and high school. You know, just be creative and let mm-hmm. your loved one know that we see how much of a big deal it is that you came mm-hmm. out of high school. It's a big deal. Yeah. And can Thank I you just so much share one of the things yeah. that, that was, I agree. Um, when Jordan mm-hmm. graduated from high school, I created, we created a family yearbook. And so, and I did it myself on the computer and I just had everybody write a note, had everybody send a picture of themselves with her. And it was not a COVID, it was just, you know, it was just what we did for her. And so there's so many ways that you can make sure, bring that love into one place. And whether it's virtually making a book, making a photo album, we can do all of those things for our babies. And someone, someone just also asked, how can we, how can they support graduations, our Eagle graduations and others, if they don't have students at the school? How can the community come together? I think in the same way that we have, um, we see our communities coming together around the, our, our first responders, we're banging pots at 7 p.m. every night. How can any ideas that we have for our, our viewers tonight who want to be supportive of this rite of passage as our young people graduate from middle school um, and high school and even from college when they don't have a student. Mm. Um, say, go ahead, Ms. Brown. Um, I would say first, I would like to say that some schools are will plan different activities when um, for eighth grade because whatever grade, eighth grade, we don't wanna leave out middle school. Um, going into high school and the high school graduations, I would like to say delayed, not canceled. 
Um, so many people are planning something later when the time is right to get together and to gather, we can have a celebration. But one way the community could support is maybe um, making signs, doing banners for the young people. Um, maybe doing that virtually, giving them words of encouragement, maybe putting a board together online for different schools and having words of encouragement for the um, eighth and the 12th grade um, mm -hmm. young men who are uh, were supposed to graduate. So I think that's something people can get very creative doing this time and maybe adopting a school if mm -hmm. you're a community, adopting a school, that would be wonderful. And, mm -hmm. and coming together with the school and saying, what can I do and doing those virtual things, it would mean a lot to the students. I think one of the things that could be really cool too, Kanita, um, how to support, um, just, I just want to veggie back on the one aspect of how we can celebrate all of our graduates, our fifth graders, mm -hmm. our eighth graders, our 12th mm -hmm. graders. You know, one of the things that's really popular right now are TikToks. How about a TikTok challenge to all the family members to create a TikTok mm -hmm. to celebrate the graduate, whether it's a fifth grade graduate, an eighth grade graduate, or a 12th grade graduate. Mm -hmm. Make it a contest in good spirits of let's see who can make the most amazing TikTok to celebrate mm -hmm. our loved one who's graduating. And then the same goes for um, supporting the schools, even if you don't have a student at Eagle, but you believe mm -hmm. in what Eagle stands for. Create a TikTok challenge of why you love Eagle and literally mm -hmm. post those TikTok challenges. This is why we love Eagle. I'm, you know, even if it's a parent of a parent, you know, who, who, whose child didn't directly go to Eagle, but knew someone who went to Eagle and gosh, I, I had an Eagle. You know, it's mm -hmm. like, make it, a fun challenge using the platforms that are in place. And those platforms are quick. And that's what I love about these platforms. Some of these platforms are so quick that you don't even have to spend a lot of time, right? And so you jump into those things, make it a challenge. Say, if you support Eagle, we, we, we invite you to make a TikTok about Eagle, why you support us. And then always be clear and unapologetic for, for asking for support any way they can. Yeah. Put that donate button at the end of something. Say, donate $5 to Eagle. Your mm -hmm. $5 can help, you know, get one kid a lunch. You know what I mean? Be unapologetic that Eagle runs on donations as well. The foundation could use your support. No number is too small. Encourage people to do that $2, that $2 TikTok campaign to support Eagle. You know what I mean? The same way that Obama raised millions with $2 campaigns. Do it for Eagle. Do it as a challenge. And so... There's all kinds of creative ways. And I agree with you, Denise, every single student that's crossing the threshold into a new um, chapter in their education should be celebrated. And I think if we're Absolutely. conscious about it, we can come up with all kinds of creative ways to let them know we are proud of you. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Michelle. So as, as we wind down, I just want to pose one final question to all of you uh, amazing, wonderful women that have joined, joined me here tonight on this special episode of Moms Making It Happen. Um, what suggestions and recommendations do you have for the working mothers out there to ensure that they are providing adequate support for their families while also taking care of their professional responsibilities. We talk about self-care. We talk about time for ourselves during the pandemic. Um, but usually where you go to, you, there's no escape from where we are today. So I would love to hear from, so from each of you as we close on how the women, the mothers, um, all the special women in our lives, um, any advice you have for them as we close out this episode? Oh, I, I have a couple. Um, basically, you know, structuring your day is, is extremely important, but also share the responsibilities with people in your family or your friends. Let's say that you may be a little, you're trying to juggle both. You're working at home or you're trying to do things at home. You have different uh, multiple children in the house. Maybe while you're trying to do something on the computer, you can have your family member uh, call and be on the phone with with your with your children to mm -hmm. keep them busy while you're able to do something for the household or do work on the computer. One one thing I, I would like to say before we close is um, this is a this is one a great time to reconnect with your sons. This is a great time. Um, also acknowledge your emotions. If you're feeling stressed, if you're feeling anxious, it's a little bit off, but I wanted to share this. 
please discuss your experience with friends and laugh, have a good laugh while you're mm -hmm. providing support for your families. And that to me is very, very important to laugh um, into in the middle of this. And also if you need any consultation or you need to speak with someone, there's health professionals there. We are overwhelmed. It is a lot going on for moms and others, dads too. So we wanna make sure that we consider all of that. Mm -hmm. Misha? I would say make time for self, you know, period, mm -hmm. Wh whatever that means. I mean, I, I, you, you, you heard a little bit of all of our lives, you know, I have two girls mm -hmm. in this house. I got a 21 about to be 22. I have a 14 about to be 15. I got a husband, um, <laughs> you know, I got a lot of stuff and, and, I, and I have a, a, a big job, you know? And so no, none of those people care about the big job um, and none of those folks should, right? Because they're my priority, um, but, but, but it is a lot. And you know, the weight is heavy on mothers. It just is, there's nothing we can do about it. You know, like it just is. Um, and so you just, I had to just create time to disconnect. This weekend was a big weekend. Mm -hmm. It was an emotional weekend for me. I told you, my daughter was not really feeling this graduation. She was just like, Ma, I don't care. Like, to your point, Michelle, like high school is different. College was like, eh, whatever. And it meant a lot to me. I mean, I'm telling you, I, when her, the schedule came out for the calendar year, I had found her graduation date, put it on my calendar, booked the days off. And it was a, a really emotional for me to not have that moment. And so I completely disconnected. I did not check email. I didn't respond to email. I didn't take work calls. Um, this weekend was about my family. It was about connecting with that, the, the, you know, with that special moment for my daughter um, and that special moment for me and my husband. And so I think you, we have to really in this time when you are the caretaker of so many people, you must take time for yourself, whatever that means. If it's watching the housewives of wherever, um, I done found Netflix, I done found All American, I done found Hulu's child and put out the little fires everywhere. Um, okay. Whatever it is you need to do, yes. but make sure you find some time for yourself um, and, and, and be religiously committed to that self time. Right, right. Well, let me, let me jump in here. I, I, I gotta be so unapologetic about this. You know, I think as mothers, we um, historically have been expected to be able to manage it all. Mm -hmm. um, and those that were able to do it and not complain were martyred, but they also had heart disease and stress mm -hmm. and clinical depression yes. and bipolar disorder, yes. undiagnosed yeah. bipolar disorder, undiagnosed clinical depression undiagnosed um, all kinds of mental health and personality disorders based on this expectation that they were supposed to be these superheroes that could cook, clean, give you a little worst name, you know, a little worst name to your husband, as you would say, Misha, gotta give him a little worst name, make him feel special. You know, we're supposed to do all this stuff yeah. in tandem, in mm -hmm. tandem, you know, and never complain. And um, I'll be the first to tell you, you know, having been married for decades, I loved it. I'm, I'm a recidivist. I know I'm going back in the institution. I'm just being clear. I'm a recidivist. I'm going back into that institution, Misha. But what I'm suggesting is that we be intentional, unapologetic, and absolutely staunch in self-care. Mm -hmm. So this is the time to allow yourself to um, live life without edge control. Uh, Kanita and I talked about it. Let your right. edges kick, you know, let them edges turn into a TWA. I've got, I've TWA. got edge control here. Let them, listen, I've, I've Misha, listen. Control. Sorry. Let, them, let them edges grow. Let that five o'clock shadow grow. Give yourself a good, wow. good shadow. See who gonna love you after you got a beard. See who gonna love you after the mustache. If you can love me when I look like um, Sasquatch, we gonna make it. We gonna, we gonna win <laughs> this race. If you can only love me when my legs are smooth and my beard is completely shaved off, then you're questionable. I also suggest learn how to embrace the discomfort of, of maturing. You know, there are some of us who are chasing maturing backward, right? We're fighting it. I'm one of those women that I'm very unapologetic about um, 50 and fooling them. Be 50 and fooling them. Let them think, well, you 50, what? Yeah, I'm 50 and fooling them. But take care of yourself. Yes. You know, get a bubble bath. Take a bubble bath. I have mm. learned how to make 
facial scrub. My oldest daughter taught me how to make my own facial scrub out of brown sugar, olive oil, lemon, and tea tree oil. I've been giving myself facials almost every night after I shave off my beard. It's been a beautiful experience. And lastly, without shame. My daughter I'm really appreciated that tip. She listen. writing it down. <laughs> Listen, yes. listen. Brown sugar, olive thing. oil, and what this else? one last olive oil, brown sugar, lemon, oh. and tea tree oil. Yeah. Right. You can make yourself you a nice homemade scrub, scrub your face, and after you shave That's your right. beard, you will feel like a newborn <laughs> child. You understand <laughs> what you will feel like an infant. Lastly, the last thing I will tell you for self-care, shameless plug. Shameless plug. Every Tuesday, right. I tell the truth. Every Tuesday, I tell the truth, which means every Tuesday, I do a short social media blast on all my platforms, Instagram, Facebook, and I call it Tell the Truth Tuesdays. Mm -hmm. I've not been able to get to my therapist because we quarantine. So every Tuesday, I get online and I tell the truth. And it's about anything I want to tell the truth about. Watch me. Mm -hmm. It'll make you laugh. I call it painfully, honestly funny. I tell the truth every Tuesday at 9.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. That's my self-care. That's me letting it out before I catch a charge and lay hands on folks. You understand me? I'm doing hymns over hands is what I'm saying. I'm praying. I'm singing hymns to keep my hands off of you. And I'm telling the truth every Tuesday at 9.30. And if you feel inclined to support that, join me every Tuesday. I'm telling the truth tonight at 9.30. Do, mothers, you owe it to yourself to watch me tell the truth on Tuesday because I ain't got nothing to fear. I'm too grown and I'm too grateful. And y'all gonna stop playing with me. That's what I say every Tuesday. So find things that entertain you. And like Misha said, she didn't put out a whole bunch of little fires. I didn't got into stuff that I didn't even know existed because I was so busy living life. I didn't know there was content like this, like Ozark. Mm -hmm. I had no mm -hmm. idea Ozark is mm -hmm. it. I, I, I got, I was so excited to watch my girl Octavia, but Octavia um, Spencer in mm -hmm. um, Self Made. Self -made. Like, yep. There's so much great yes. content with mm -hmm. us Good. in it. You got to watch uh, Michelle Obama's Becoming Tour. Yes. That's on Netflix. There's so much good content with us as the stars. And Absolutely. so immerse yourself in that stuff for self value and self worth and self you know, self-uplifting and, and, and watch me tell the truth on Tuesday tonight at 9.30. Thank you, Michelle. Even I, as we transition, oh. um, this Friday, I just want to drop another another plug. Um, mm -hmm. Please, for your young men out there, please join Aaron Barnett, our Director of Strategic Partnerships mm -hmm. and Mentoring for the third episode of Clear to Crisis. Um, this mm -hmm. Friday's episode um, will run at 3.30 on all of our platforms, Facebook Live and YouTube. And Aaron will be talking about our scholar athletes and how to maintain your self-confidence, how these young men can maintain their self-confidence during the crisis. Um, I'm going to wrap up. We are, we're taking a break next week. The Virtual Village will be back on Tuesday, May 26th. Um, and I just want to say to all of you, thank you for joining me this evening. I love you. You are fierce. You are powerful. And we are all going to be all right because resilience is in the fabric of our DNA. It's Amen. who we are. It's who we have always been. It's who our mothers are, our grandmothers, and everyone that came before them. Um, and when in those days where you, where you struggle, lean on that to know that we, we have always had this strength. So finally, I'm gonna leave you. I did watch Becoming uh, Michelle's. So I was inspired to leave all the women tonight with a word from her final speech as first lady. Don't be afraid, be focused, be determined, be hopeful and be empowered. So good night. Thank you all for joining good night. us. Good night. For this special episode of the Virtual Village. Thank good you. Time. Good night. Good night.